Your Majesties, distinguished members of the Norwegian Nobel Committee, my fellow campaigners here and throughout the world, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great privilege to accept this award together with Beatrice on behalf of all the remarkable human beings who form ICANN movement. You each give me such a tremendous hope that we can and will bring the era of nuclear weapon to an end. I speak as a member of the family of Hibakusha. Those of us who survived the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. For more than seven decades, we have been working hard for the total abolition of nuclear weapons. We have stood in solidarity with those harmed by the production and testing of these horrific weapons around the world. People from places with long forgotten names like Muroa, Eka, Semi Palatinsk, Maralanga, Bikini. People whose lands and seas were poisoned with radiation, whose bodies were experimented upon whose cultures were forever disrupted. We are not content to be victims. We refuse to wait for a fiery end or to slow poisoning of our world. We refuse to sit idly in terror, as the so-called great powers took us past nuclear dusk and brought us recklessly close to nuclear midnight. We rose up. We shared our stories of survival. We said, Nuclear weapons and humanities cannot coexist. <laughs> Today, I want you to feel in this hall the presence of all those who perished in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I want you to feel above and around a great cloud of a quarter million souls. Each person had a name. Each person was loved by someone. Let us ensure that their deaths were not in vain. I was just 13 years old girl when the United States dropped the first atomic bomb on my city of Hiroshima. 
I remember that morning vividly. At 8.15, I saw a blinding bluish-white flash. I remember having the sensation of floating in the air. When I regained the consciousness in the total darkness and silence, I found myself pinned under the collapsed building. I knew I was faced with death. I began hearing faint voices of my classmates around me. Mother, help me. God, help me. Then all of a sudden, somebody shook my left shoulder from behind. The man saying, don't give up, keep pushing, keep kicking. You see the sun ray coming through that opening. Crawl toward it as quickly as possible. As I crawled out, the rubble was on fire. Most of my classmates in the same building were burnt to death alive. I saw all around me utter unrecognizable, unimaginable devastation. Procession of ghostly figures shuffled by. Grotesquely wounded people, they were bleeding, burned, blackened, and swollen. Parts of their bodies were missing, flesh and skin hung from their bones. Some with their own eyeballs hanging in their hands. Some with their bellies burst open, their intestines hanging out. The foul stench of burnt human flesh filled the air. Thus, with one bomb, my beloved city was obliterated. Most of its residents were civilians who were incinerated, vaporized, carbonized, among them members of my own family and 351 schoolmates of mine. In the weeks, months, and the years that followed, many thousand more, more would die, often in random and mysterious ways from the delayed effects of radiation. Still to this day, radiation is killing survivors. Whenever I remember Hiroshima, the first image that comes to my mind is my four-year-old nephew, Eiji. His little body transformed into an unrecognizable melted chunk of flesh. He kept begging for water in a faint voice until his death released him from agony. To me, he came to represent all the innocent children of the world, threatened as they are at this very moment by nuclear weapons. 
Every second of every day, nuclear weapon endanger everyone we love and everything we hold dear. We must not tolerate this insanity any longer. Through our agony and the sheer struggle to survive and to rebuild our lives from the ashes, we Hibaksha became convinced that we must warn the world about these apocalyptic weapons. Time and again, we shared our testimonies. But still, some refuse to see Hiroshima and Nagasaki atrocities as war crimes. They accepted propaganda that these were good bombs that had ended the war, just war. It was this myth that led the disastrous nuclear arms race, a race that continues to this day. Nine nations still threaten to incinerate entire cities, to destroy life on Earth, to make a beautiful world uninhabitable for our future generations. The development of nuclear weapon signifies not the country's elevation to greatness, but to its descent to the darkest depths of depravity. These weapons are not a necessary evil. They are the ultimate evil. <laughs> On the 7th of July this year, I was overwhelmed with joy when a great majority of the world's nation voted to adopt the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. Having witnessed humanity at its worst, I witnessed that day humanity at its best. We Hibaksha had been waiting for the ban for 72 years. Let this be the beginning of the end of nuclear weapons. All responsible leaders will listen to this, <clears throat> will sign this treaty. And history will judge harshly those who reject it. No longer.
No longer shall the abstract theories mask the genocidal reality of their practices. No longer shall deterrence be viewed as anything but a deterrent to disarmament. No longer shall we live under the mushroom cloud of fear. To the officials of nuclear weapon nations and to their accomplices under the so-called nuclear umbrella, I say this. Listen to our testimony. Heed our warning. And know that your actions are consequential. You are each an integral part of the system of violence that threaten humankind. Let us all be alert to the banality of evil. To every president and prime minister of every nation of the world, I beseech you, join this treaty, forever eradicate the threat of nuclear annihilation. When I was a 13-year-old girl trapped in the smoldering rubble, I kept pushing, I kept moving toward the light. And I survived. Our light now is a banned treaty. To all in this hall and all listening around the world, I repeat those words that I heard in the ruins of Hiroshima. Don't give up, keep pushing, keep moving. See the light, crawl towards it. Tonight, we march through the streets of Oslo with torches aflame. Let us follow each other out of the dark night of nuclear terror. No matter what obstacles we face, we will keep moving and keep pushing and keep sharing this light for others. This is our passion, our commitment for our one precious world to survive. <laughs>